What is going on guys, I'm Fabio and on this channel I help you become a better programmer so subscribe if you're interested. In this video I'm gonna show you how to use Flexbox and also Grid to fix the footer at the bottom of the page even if you don't have a lot of content. By the way, you can get the source code of my videos using the link down in the description and if you're struggling with programming you can also find links to join amazing learning platforms and a lot more down below as well. So here we are inside Visual Studio Code and we've got live server running and preacher running as well. Here, this is the structure of my project. Okay, so you've got index.html file and two CSS files, one for the Flexbox and one for Grid. I'm going to use Flexbox first and then I'm going to show you how to use Grid. So let's actually do something like this. Let's close that. All right, perfect. So this is the structure of the file. Okay, so I've got the link to the main flex.css file, then the main grid CSS file. Then here I've got the body. Inside I've got the header with a few links and a navigation. Then the content container with its one and three paragraphs. And then down here, our amazing footer. I'm fixed at the bottom. You are not yet, but that's what we're going to tackle in this video. So let's go here. I'm going to show you the CSS. First of all, let's actually see what we've got. So this is what we've got, okay? So we've got the body with Flexbox. So we're gonna use Flexbox, as I said, for the main structure, then the header, the navigation, okay? Just a few cool things just to make the website a little bit better than just plain text, right? Okay, so this is the H1, okay? The footer, as you can see, and then the H1 like that, perfect. So what do we have? We have this thing here. As you can see, you've got the header up here, then the content container, and then the footer down here. And of course, down here, you've got empty space. Why? Because the content is not enough to cover the whole page. So if we go to the developer tools, as you can see, if you hover over the body, as you can see, it goes from the top to here, okay? So this is what we've got. So first of all, we want the body to go from here to down here, okay? And how can we do this? We are gonna do this by setting the height of the body to 100 viewport height, which means cover the whole viewport. And now if we hover over the body here, as you can see, it covers the whole thing. But if we click on flex, okay? As you can see, you've got the first element, the second element, the third element, and down here, this pattern signals that basically this is empty space. So how can we actually make it so that the footer goes down here to cover this space here? We're not gonna touch the footer, but we're gonna touch the content container. Why? Because Flexbox has this amazing property, which is flex grow, and it also has flex shrink. By the way, later on, I'm gonna show you how to fix one problem that you might encounter on small screens. So it has those two properties. The flex grow is set to zero by default, which means don't grow at all, all right? But you can set flex grow and it sort of says to the browser what to do if you've got remaining space, if you've got empty space. In this case, the container goes from up here to down here because this is the body, a container, and you've got empty space down here. So what can we actually do? We want to tell the content container, which is the content container goes from here to here. If you've got remaining space, just stretch to cover it. And how can we do that? We can do that by going down here, content container, flex, grow, one. Which means, all right, if you've got empty space, if you've got remaining space, you can stretch to cover it. So let's see what we've got. As you can see, you get this. Why? Because the empty space down here now has been added to the content container. So the content container is taller, right? It goes from here to here. And here you've got the empty space that was down here. And if you zoom out like that, as you can see, it stretches because you want this to cover the whole thing. So this is how you can actually fix that. But as I said, you've got a problem with small screens. By the way, don't forget that you can get the source code of my videos using the link down in the description, where you can also find other interesting things like links to join amazing learning platforms to take your skills to the next level. So let's actually open the developer tools. Up here, you've got the responses design mode. We're actually going to do that. As you can see now, you've got the height of the footer 200 pixels, which is fine. And you can actually see that here layout 200 pixels all right but what happens if we actually 
do this. As you can see, the footer is smaller now. Why? Because basically you've got flex shrink one, which means that if you don't have enough space in the page to, to actually hold every element, right? It shrinks the elements that can shrink. Basically, the H1 is here, all right? So you've got empty space here and here. So it says, all right, footer, you can actually shrink because why? Because the H1 doesn't need that amount of space. So you can actually shrink. So it shrinks to let the remaining of the content to actually grow, all right? Without having to scroll up and down the page. So as you can see, it goes like that. But you can actually change this behavior because let's go back here. As you can see, flex shrink one minus 108 pixels. So it shrinks by 108 pixels and the final size is 92. But what if we want to actually keep this to 100 pixels? We can just set flex shrink to zero. So let's actually do that down here in the footer. We're going to do that, something like flex shrink zero. All right. So we're saying, no, I don't want the footer to shrink. I just want this to stay 200 pixels. And as you can see, it stays 200 pixels, even when we do something like this, right? It stays 200 pixels, right? So this is this is just one little thing. I was just wanted to mention it because maybe you are experimenting with things and you see this and you don't understand why. So I just wanted to mention it. So now that we've got this working with Flexbox, we can do the same thing, but using grid. So let's actually co copy this and do this. And then here, we are going to comment this out and like that. Perfect. So grid. Of course, I'm going to use grid just for the main uh, structure. Okay. So inside the body, in the header, in the nav, etc., I'm just going to use uh, flexbox uh, as usual. All right. So here, instead of display flex, I'm going to do something different. So I'm going to use display grid. And I'm also going to remove the height from the header. I'm going to remove the flex row from the content container, of course. And then down here, the height 200 pixels and also the flex shrink zero. I'm going to remo remove that. As you can see, this is what we've got. It doesn't look great because it sort of stretches things randomly to actually cover the whole page. Okay, it doesn't look great. So how can we actually do things properly? We just need to add this grid template rows. 70 pixels auto and then 200 pixels like that and this is sort of the same as flex uh, row etc because you've got 70 pixels the first row which is the header then 200 pixels the last row which is the footer and then auto means okay if you've got space left in the page just stretch to cover it it says to the second row which is a content container to stretch and as you can see you've got this pretty pretty cool the only problem is this one. It's not centered. Okay. So how can we actually center it? That's easy as well, because we just need to go down here and do something like place self, which is something that you can use in elements inside the grid. And you can do something like start center. So this is vertically and this is horizontally. Okay. So start means from the top and then center means centered horizontally. So let's save it and see what we've got. Okay, so we've got the same exact thing using grid. Now on the screen, you should see another cool video about web development. So click on it and keep learning. As always, in the description, you can find the link to get the source code of my videos and support the channel as well. Check out all the other links, like the video if you liked it, and also subscribe to the channel as well. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.